Welcome back everybody, Steve and Ron here, and we're now on section five or part five in the basic Cocoa Pie setup steps. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to download the ROMs needed to make the emulators work. These are your Cocoa basic ROMs and disk basic ROMs and things like that. Um, what, this is also done through the menu and it is done through the terminal window. But what you will notice here as Ron brings up this terminal window, now that we're in the super high res, well, the terminal window is kind of small. The fonts are kind of small. So depending on the resolution, you end up running your Cocoa Pie in because you can change this resolution to whatever you like now that we're in a GUI. You might want to change your font size. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to go to Edit and Preferences. And then where it says Mono Space Regular Font there, is that where you're going to click, Ron? Yep. And then down there in the bottom where it says size is defaulting to a 10 point font size. But I think if we go up to about a 24, this should make it look pretty good. You'll click on select, you'll click on OK. Uh, you can see the fonts bigger. You have, you have to actually type in the word exit or do you just have to close the either one? You either can type one. Or just hit this. All right. So once we close that uh, window and then we launch it again by clicking on the little shell prompt from the top menu bar, then boom, now we can see the menu prompt is or the, 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 the terminal prompt is big. So when we type in menu, now the menu looks pretty much like it used to look in the old pie image. It's much more les legible in this high resolution. So the step we're going to do now is to download the ROMs. This is this only needs to be done once. Uh, that's under the utilities menu. And then it's under the Cocoa Pie Downloads menu, which is uh, Utilities Option 3. And then uh, Option 2 says Download ROMs and Images to your uh, ROMs location. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter there on Option 2. It's going to tell us what it's going to do. It says Press Any Key to Continue. We are going to do that. It is downloading the ROMs and it says Done. Press Any Key to Continue. And now we are done here. We've downloaded the ROMs. I think it's probably worth mentioning one more thing while we're while we're here downloading ROMs for the emulators. Because we just ran the git update, we should probably go ahead and cover emulator updates in this video too. Does that make sense? Since they're sure. kind of related? Sure. Yep. So that would be we have to go down a little bit, right? To return to utilities menu. And then this is going to be under, where is the emulators? Is that under administration? Yes. Yep. Uh, so we'll go to administration. Then here is where it's going to say select MAME. Or, or actually, we have to install latest MAMEs first, right? Yeah. Then there we, we go. Yep. Okay. The so option 22, install MAME package file. And then now this is showing us that we have a few different versions to choose from. The latest one being number two is currently the 0.235. And you just type in number two to, to do that. Whenever a new version of MAME is available and you run the GitHub update, it'll add a new option here to this list of available versions. So as new MAME updates and new XWAR updates and new OVCC updates become available, you'll be able to pull them in and then choose which version you want to run. And as, as it builds this running list of emulators, if you needed to revert back to an older version for whatever reason, you could just switch and, and select a previous version as your active version. So right now we're doing this, um, getting the latest Tim Lindner uh, updates to MAME. And there's a lot of people who don't fully understand why MAME is always updating. We'll just give you the short stir for the short version of that is it, it just does. <laughs> right, MAME is being worked on by hundreds of people around the world and MAME is a big system designed to emulate many things and there's a cause and effect when somebody fixes or adds something for a completely different system the effect is it may break or hinder something on the Coco side of things. So we have people like Tim Lindner and other folks who will continuously uh, kind of get those things pushed back up to fix whatever got broken as well as add new functionality which is happening all the time. So you want to always be trying to do a GitHub and a MAME update on a fairly regular basis because it is a moving target and it is being updated frequently. Um, so it, we've now switched to option two. We now have the latest MAME and while we're here we might as well help grab the latest XROR as well if it's not there. Um, and now we have to actually activate it, right? So we're going to hit one to activate that version. We'll go ahead and get out of here, press any key, 
and then um, where we just were was also select uh, okay install export package file so this is going to pull anything new from here looks like option three is the latest one actually I should probably clarify something I said a minute ago before we saw there were two versions available for download however since we only downloaded one of those our options to choose which one we wanted to make the current or default or active version and we only had one choice if we had downloaded the two or three versions we could have then selected between those and, and the same would be true here for x -Ware. we just downloaded option three but if we needed to we could download all three of these and kind of switch between the versions if needed um, yep. right. and what's noteworthy on this uh, current um, work in progress version of x -Roar, is that there is experimental support for the Coco 3 now for the first time in XROAR. Another reason why you want to kind of do your Git updates on a regular basis and emulator updates on a regular basis because new features are being added all the time. Okay, so we got that. So now we've got the latest MAME and we've got the latest XROAR. We have downloaded ROMs. I'll pick option one. It's showing that one is the... Oh, so option I mean, one is the new version. I yeah, see the numbers. Yeah. The numbers are higher. Okay. It's just because the way it's alphanumeric sort, I think, is why it's doing that. So. Okay. So we're going to make that the latest version. Um, so now we've downloaded ROMs. We've updated the emulators to the latest version. Let's just go ahead and fire up one of each of the machines. We'll fire up uh, a MAME Coco and we'll fire up an XROAR Coco. Um, so Ron um, exited the main menu and, and chose return. Uh, he went from the utilities menu, hit return to main menu. And this is now the main menu of the Cocoa Pie. And you notice you can choose to pull up a color computer 2, a color computer 3, etc. So we'll just try a good old fashioned Cocoa 2 in MAME. So, um, and the stock Cocoa 2 is what we call Cocoa 2 with deck B, which is disk extended color basic. And then if you just hit enter, that should fire up MAME and boom. Now, the fact that you see the words Disk Extended Color Basic 1.1, that is there because of those ROMs we just downloaded. The ROMs for Basic and the ROMs for Disks are there. Um, it does default to a window now, and to go to full screen, is it just Alt-Enter? It is, let me try that. And if we hit Alt-Enter, of course, we're running it through a capture device, um, and now it's come up. Now, this looks a little stretched, and this might be due to um, if your TV does not, if your TV automatically stretches things or your monitor, that may come up that way. And because we're running this through a capture device, it's a little stretched. But depending on your screen orientation and configuration, this hopefully does not look rectangular. It looks more squarish. But Alt Enter takes you to full screen, and then Alt Enter again would um, take you back to windowed mode. And the beauty of this, now that we're in a GUI, is you could launch the menu multiple times and bring up multiple machines side by side, which is something that was not available before. So if we launch the menu again, we open up a new terminal and type in the word menu. And this time, let's open up a Coco in XROAR, right? And we just pull up a Coco 2 in XROAR. It'll launch that, and we have another Coco. And actually, I like the way XROAR looks a little darker and bolder than MAME does. <laughs> um, so now we have a Coco 2 in MAME side by side with a Coco 2 in XROAR. And I believe XROAR was F11 to go full screen. Uh, let's try it. I think it is. And that, and that one actually oriented properly. So that's a nice full screen Coco in XROAR. Um, and if you hit F11 again, it will um, take you out. So it, what, the thing to realize here is that this is not meant to be a retro pie where you have everything available through a joystick driven kind of gallery interface. This is meant to let you boot up a Coco at a Coco prompt and use it like it was a real computer. That's more of the goal of this project. This is not meant to be a easy to use game loading front end. It's meant to be a fairly easy to use Coco emulation platform that where you can just fire up Cocos and play with the Coco as if it were real. So you still have to insert a floppy disk virtually and insert a cartridge virtually. Um, it's not meant to be kind of game joystick driven. It's meant to be more real Coco experience. So uh, that's video number five, how to download ROMs. And we gave you some bonus content that wasn't in the setup document of just updating your emulators and showing you a fairly quick way to fire up an emulator. And this is now the fifth and final video in the initial setup steps. At this point now, 
you have a working cocoa pie. Um, when you've completed these five steps and you've basically um, downloaded your image, burned your image, expanded your file system, joined your network, either wired or wirelessly, run a few update scripts, and then download your ROMs and update your emulators, boom, you're now at a base cocoa pie. There's not a lot of constant maintenance required at this point other than the occasional updates to the emulators but right now we're at ground zero on the new cocoa pie image and what you will do at home at this point forward when you boot up is you'll just click on that little black terminal icon window up there on the title bar and you're going to see a generic prompt but just type the word menu and hit enter and this is now your Cocoa Pie menu. And most of the time, you're going to be using the first eight options. You're going to be looking at Color Computer 2 setups. You're going to be looking at Color Computer 3 setups, MC10 setups, and Dragon setups. And so these are just the various user-friendly menu options to choose what machine you want to boot and in what configuration, because there's tons of different configurations for your various Cocos with add-on hardware like multi-pack interfaces and the Orchestra 90 card and, and the speech sound cartridge and the Game Master cartridge. So there's so many different configurations that you can pull from these menus. But typically you're going to boot up, you're going to just open up your prompt, type in the word menu, choose a machine and go. At that point you're in a Coco and it's, it is going to require a little bit of knowledge on how to load files and cartridges using the MAME emulator which we will do in a uh, subsequent video. But hopefully these first five videos are a great way for you to hit the ground running, getting your Cocoa Pie ready to start emulating a color computer, MC10 and Dragon, and having fun. Have I missed anything, Ron? No, you covered it very well. I appreciate you, uh, you doing this for everybody, Steve. This is great. And likewise. All right, so we're gonna press the button and end this recording and get these videos posted to YouTube for your viewing pleasure and keep those questions, comments, and feedback coming. Uh, you can um, hit us up on the uh, Discord channel. You can uh, leave some comments on the Facebook group. We'd love to hear what you're doing with the Cocoa Pie and some suggestions you might have to make the Cocoa Pie uh, better. And thank you all. Thank you, Ron Klein. Thank you.